it's it's we're going to pit mines to data and scatter plots. See some scatter plots in the future for the world. Scatter plots where we take a bunch of data points, put them on a graph, and look for some kind of correlation. We do that first graph. Looks like there's a positive correlation in there. It looks like if I did draw a line behind those relevant points, it should form up to a positive correlation. Looks like it stops kind of going downhill. We call that a negative correlation. I mean, we can't really see a pattern at all. We see no correlation. We can't tell if this is like we stop going up well, downhill, or or what. Example one says describe the correlation shown by each scatter plot. We read what it says there. It doesn't ask us to interpret what's going on. Instantly, I can see that I've got a positive correlation on the first one, and although it's not as clear, I can see a negative correlation on the second one. That's it for that. Next, we're supposed to say whether there's a correlation. We're supposed to have a negative one, negative one half, zero, one half, or one. What this means is. Or you can, it's really easy to see the negative correlation and say negative one. If you kind of see a negative correlation, you might say negative one half. If you can't see a correlation at all, we'll say zero. If we kind of, if we can totally tell that there's a correlation that's positive, we can say it's close to one. If it kind of looks like it's positive, but it's not really that easy to tell, we might say one half. Example of these, if these look like they're kind of going down, but it's not that straight of a line, Negative 0.5. Part B, I can't see uphill or downhill, so I say it's probably close to zero. And part C, if the streets are going up and the lot stops are all kind of stacked tightly together, you might say close to one. These ones will become more important as we go into some statistics type courses. The closer that number is to one or negative one, the more there is a positive or negative. When I draw my graph, I can draw a graph that's reasonable, so I don't waste too much space in the table. So we'll go from 0 to 7 and 50 to 500. Notice that by choosing my x values and my y values for it, I can draw a graph that's reasonable. I do my little squiggly line here to show that this at least is a case that I'm just not reading the graph. I don't want to waste the table. I don't need to waste to take up space. process is not going to actually require you choose, to choose two points on the line. We'll be able to use a graphing calculator to come up with a, the best possible line for these points later. So for now, I don't really care what two points you choose. I'm just going to choose the two endpoints. I'll choose my 0, 280, 
on my seven five forty eight to come up with my equation of a line. Going to the process for finding the equation of the line, I notice my slope is thirty eight point three about. And using that, my equation of a line would come out to be thirty eight point three plus two eighty. And I'd be done. If you're not sure how to get the slope and that equation, go back and look at the lesson on how to find slope and how to find an equation of a line given a slope and a point. Moving on, we're told to use the equation from example three to predict the number of alternative fueled vehicles in 2010. Let's look at what our equation from the last problem is really telling us. Uh, X, if we remember, was years after 1997. In this case, since 2010, that would be 13 years after 1997. So we want to find out how many alternative fueled vehicles there are in 2010. We figure out Y of 13, plug it into the equation, and we get 72.8, or no, 728, I can't read my own writing, 778, and if you go back and look at example 3, remember that's not 778 vehicles, that's 778,000 vehicles, because my output was in thousands of vehicles, and that's it for that one. Next example says to use the linear regression feature on your graphing calculator to find an equation of the best fitting line for the data in example three. Specific details on how to do the graphing calculator portions, you'll get that information elsewhere on Dropbox. Once you go through the process, make sure that you can come up with that best fit line. You cannot come up with this equation without a graphing calculator. Again, check the Dropbox link for information on how to do that problem step by step. Depending on which calculator you have, the directions will be a little different. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own. Otherwise, the lesson is